thing. Um, but but it's, it's, it's true. We, we often forget, we often forget that we are the embodiment of the divine. This is the basis of which you and is built. And grief, as I have experienced firsthand, is not pretty. Grief is not pretty. You know there's a saying, when you know better, you do better? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no. That, you, you, things happen in your life when that, that saying does not apply. It does not apply. And then, and then when the grief hit, when the grief hit, all those practices, the healthy practices, the healthy spiritual practices, the healthy physical practices, they went out the window. And I did whatever I could do to feel comfortable, to feel some sense of comfort, but, something. But this is what being in that grief experience is like. And when these things happen in our lives, we do our best, consciously and unconsciously, to avoid them. We don't want to feel the pain. We don't want to feel the hurt. How soon can I get out of this kind of deal? But we forget that what's really happening to us is that our hearts are being cracked wide open. When we suffer loss, when we suffer sadness, pain, disappointment, first of all, we're doing it because we had an attachment to something. But that's normal. We're human beings. We can't not have attachments and preferences. You know, the Buddhist practice is to try and be aware of them. But you know what I say about unity people, right? Unity people, we're really Christians who want to be Buddhists. We just don't want to work that hard. I've got my Buddha. Got my Buddha. So, you know, we love the meditation. We love all that kind of stuff. But, but when it comes to those moments, you know, it, and, 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 and the pain is so crippling because we are, our hearts are being cracked open. We're being left raw and vulnerable. And the last thing we want to do is feel vulnerable in front of other people. We don't want other people to see us suffer. We don't want other people to see us in pain. And if there's any gift, and there's any gift from the experience of Jennifer passing away and going to join the angels, is that it made me crack open like nothing I had ever experienced in my whole life. Everything fell away. I didn't know what was up, down, left, right. Everything fell away. You know what happens when everything falls away? You know what's left? God. God. I thought I knew God before that experience. Now, if you could know God at that level without the experience, you know, good on you. But here's the thing. Remember when I asked you to raise your hands, those of you who suffered loss? Yet you're not going to stop suffering loss. You're still going to suffer loss in your lives. At some point after the day, some of you are going to lose a spouse, some of you are going to lose a parent, some of you might lose a child. This is, the, this is life. This is the normalcy of life. And we've got to remember that when we are cracked wide open like that, and our hearts are exposed and raw, and everything else has fallen away, and you don't think that there's a way you are walking on through this, this is when you will find the divine that resides within you. And the but most the powerful of the way. matter is, is that we are getting ready as a human race to shift, I believe, into this next level of consciousness. And we're not doing it until we clean all this stuff up. <laughs> it is coming up to be healed. And stuff that comes up to be healed does not look pretty along the way. It does not. It does not when everything falls away, when you encounter some form of suffering that drives you to your knees, that's truly, truly when you realize that you are the embodiment of love because that's all that's left. All that's left is God and God is love. And when you can connect with that, and begin to really feel that and breathe that just a little bit more every day. That's when you refine yourself. You refine and refine yourself. And you come out in a way that's, that I have no words for. You refine yourself and you grow. Spiritual practice is not just meditating. It's not just 
reading good words. It's, it's those things, not just yoga. It's, it's those things too. But the ultimate spiritual practice is remembering who you are during the times that you forget who you are. Remembering who you are during those times that will cause you to forget who you are. As divine beings, we are the embodiment of God's love. We are God's love. But what happens in life sometimes is pain, disappointment, grief, loss, kind of covers that up a little bit. We've got to get back to opening our hearts, opening them fully. To not be afraid to be vulnerable, to not to be afraid to show others our hearts no matter how much we've been hurt or we've been in pain because that is the only way, that is the only way that we as a species, we as a human consciousness are going to make that next leap together when we just live from the heart. And to live from the heart, we got to visit our shadow, we got to visit our dark corners in our psyche, get the spiritual swifter out, dust the cobwebs, shine some light in there, and heal. And heal. See everything in your life that pushes your button and pisses you off as red flags point into those areas in your life where we need to heal. Don't avoid the pain and the discomfort. Embrace it. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Turn to someone and say, it's okay to be uncomfortable. Because it is through discomfort that we learn where the healing needs to be. It's where we learn where the healing needs to be. Don't use your spiritual path and your practice as a way to avoid discomfort. Use it as a way to keep you grounded in the discomfort and a place to come home to during your healing because that's what the discomfort is. Telling you the stuff you still gotta work on. 